Hi there, everybody. I am Michael Buckoff, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of the lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. And anyone watching the video, if you want a really good online course, you can go to onlinetoeflcourse.com. You can learn more about what my service offers and what you can do to increase your TOEFL score. In this video, I will be either listening to speaking practice test or pronunciation practice, or I will be reading some of my students' writing practice tests and giving them scores. Uh, so anyone watching the video can have an idea of kind of how my course works. Remember, a lot of courses out there, they don't offer all the same services. So for me, I actually give speaking, pronunciation, and writing feedback. A lot of TOEFL courses don't do that. So during this video, you'll kind of see how my course operates. The first uh, email that I'm looking at right now, this is uh, one of my online students who has sent me a speaking practice test. And in this case, uh, because he has a lot of intelligibility issues, you will find out in just a minute, uh, I, I have him send me a written and an oral response to his speaking to make sure I can understand everything that he's saying. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a file and talk to this student directly. That's how I communicate with my students. My students never meet me uh, in person and we do not meet online in real time. So there's usually a delay. So the student sends me speaking and writing practice one day. I give the student comments on the next day. Here we go. Yeah, hi there, Srikanth. This is Michael, and I'm looking at your independent speaking practice test 48. So you say, I would like to get to fire the employees and manager who constantly shows up for work late because of the project work and the deadline. So I would just say, I would fire. I would say it this way. I would fire an employee who shows up for work late because of the project work and the deadline. That's a more concise way of saying that. So then, you say, first of all, I would fire an employee who shows up for work late because of the project work. Then when you say, the next one, as a manager of a company will have to recommend, you can't, you, you really, you have as, which uses manager and then will have, but you have no main subject and main verb. This is a fragment. So go to Google, uh, Srikanth, type in the word fragment, F-R-A-G-M-E-N-T. What is a fragment in writing? How do you correct that issue? That's something I want you to look at. And here, I would just say this, for example, uh, if an employee does not submit the project work on time, then it will affect other workers who will also turn in their work late, which means it will reflect very poorly on the whole company, which is why I would fire this kind of employee. So the next one, you say, second of all, I would also fire an employee that shows up for work late because of the deadlines that we face. And then again, see, you're using the same grammar each time, but it doesn't work. Again, you have another fragment. So to change it, you'll see, for instance, and remember, you're focusing on the employee. You might say, for instance, managers get orders and pressure from company executives to complete deadlines on time. If an employee finishes his work late, then these managers will not be able to complete the work by the deadline, which will cause problems. Therefore, I would also fire an employee because of this reason. So that's how I would make. Those are some of the changes uh, I would make to your language use. Right? Okay, now let me go ahead and um, I'm going to open up your speaking file and listen to it. I'm going to give you a score now. So let's hear. So already, just looking at it, you have uh, some problems with your sentence structure, this time using fragments. And remember, really hone, really make sure that you're really answering the question specifically. You like to talk about things more in the third person. You don't want to put yourself in there. But I would say, if I were the manager, I would fire 
an employer who shows up for work late because. So make it personal to you as you're answering these kinds of questions. Okay, here we go. Let's listen to your response. Personally, I would like to get to find the employee as a manager who constantly shows up for work late because of the project work and the time. First of all, I would like to get to find the employee that constantly shows up for work late because of the project work. Because of the project work, you didn't clearly pronounce that last part of the sentence. Manager of a company not recommend working employee to submit the project work in time because some workers constantly don't get submitted to them. Second of all, I also would like to get to fire the employee that constantly shows up for work late because of the deadline. For instance, as a manager of a company, you say the word not for instance, but for instance. Okay, so on this one, uh, you already have language use issues, which I pointed out. Delivery, believe it or not, it's not perfect. You're making some progress, I think, with your pausing. I know that you had another email about that. So basically, when, when you're pausing, you need to pause after four to five stressed syllables, then you have a pause. You know, if this is not the last idea in the sentence, you should have a rising inflection on that thought group. And once you get to the final thought group in the sentence, that's when your tone drops. So again, you're pausing after every four or five stress words, and stress words typically are defined as nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and verbs. Now, for more information on that, Shrikanth, you can go to Pronunciation Lessons 41 through 44 to learn more about pausing, phrasing, blending, thought groups, and so on. Uh, I think on this one, so uh, topic development, the main thing is make what you're saying more specific. This is an independent task. That means I want you to relate it to your personal experience, which means you can certainly use the I or that first person uh, point of view. And that helps show that you're directly answering this question according to your personal experience. Uh, so I think overall on this one, I'm going to put you at about 1.83 out of 4, 14 points out of 30 on this particular practice test. Okay, this next student completed one of my integrated speaking or integrated writing practice tests. So my job here is to read through the essay and then give the student a score according to the TOEFL IBT integrated writing rubrics. Paragraph 1. I'm going to go ahead and read it out loud here. I'm not going to make any corrections at all. I'm just going to read it the way the student wrote it. Recently, there has been a lot of debate about disability people definition. One group of people represented by the speaker attempts to diffuse disabled person who has physical or mental impairment which defect one or more life activity. However, the other group, like author, think that disabled people are not sick. First, the lecturer claims that person with a disability isn't sick. His body may get diseased one day, but it isn't always sick. But the author refutes this point by saying, many people think that people with special needs are sick. He adds that disability may be a mental or physical impairment. Second, according to the lecture, disability doesn't relate it to quality of life. He explains that people with special needs, and this is a Spanish speaker, because that, they do that in Spanish, says, um, with walking, hearing, or speaking, can life like a normal, by the new technology, for instance, people with visual problem can get a higher degree of education. However, the text mentions that society consider people with disability have a poor quality of life, like they don't work, Living in old and broken houses, moreover, they aren't able to get a high education. Third, the speaker makes the point that people who have special needs don't like to be inspirational. They like to be a normal people. Many of athletes have disability. On the other hand, according to the passage, society considers disability people inspirational, brave, like wheelchair students at school, unable to walk. So most of people are inspired by them, basically 
the professor's opinion that people have disability are not sick, also their quality of life isn't poor, and we should deal with them as a normal person's while the passage refutes each point of the speaker. Now you guys, if you read it with me here, you don't know what the reading or the listening passage is about, so it's hard for you to, to grade it like I am. But for the most part, the student, I think, is about 80% complete in his discussion of the reading and the listening passage, and the student didn't really misrepresent any ideas. So I think topic development's not bad, right? Okay, let's go over to the rubrics now. We need to give it a score. It, it just has too many errors to score in the four range, right? Let's look at the three. We have your response conveys an incomplete, inaccurate, or imprecise connection in the lecture to the ideas in the reading. We have score of two. We have language errors or expressions that make connections unclear. Uh, I think it's better than that. I think if, if, it, if it didn't have major errors in there, it says your essay has more frequent and noticeable minor language errors, but these errors do not result in anything more than an occasional lapse of clarity or connection. I'm going to say it doesn't qualify there. I'm going to score this student here at about three. Uh, 3.0 out of 5, uh, 20 points out of 30. Uh, overall, that's a score I'm going to give this student. This next student is actually getting some pronunciation feedback. And remember, a lot of online TOEFL courses, if they offer any pronunciation training at all, it's typically its own course, its own price, and in my online TOEFL course, you get pronunciation feedback, speaking feedback, writing feedback, and you get access to more than 700 different lessons, all designed to help improve your academic English language proficiency, all for the same low price. If you don't believe me, go to onlinetoeflcourse.com. So this particular student has completed or completed a pronunciation pretest, and my job is to figure out specifically what problems she's having with vowel and consonant sounds of American English. That is my goal right now. So let me go ahead and start uh, my comments to her. Yeah, hi there, Priya. This is Michael, and I am right now going to listen to your pretest that you sent me by email. So let's get started with that. Okay, the first thing in lesson 11, you need, you, need, you need to make the longer sound longer. Boat, grow, over, though. That particular sound you need to work on. Pat, pot, map, mop, tack, talk, and on, mac, mock, bright. So you're saying mock. I'm saying mock. So you're saying that that pot, mop, talk, on, mock. I'm going to say pat, pot, map, mop, ah, eh, ah. So that second sound in lesson eight you also need to work on. Brown, broil, lie, loud, loyal, pie, pound. 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 So the diphthongs, I think you need to more completely pronounce. There are actually two vowel sounds coming together to form one longer sound. So I think you can work in that area also. Get, get, let, let, mate, met, blade, blit, den, den. No, your longer sound's not long enough. Gate, get, late, let. Mate, met, blade, bled, dane, den. Meet, mit, peat, pit, leap, lip, seat, sit, heat, hit. I'm going to say you're almost there, but I still think you should practice that. Meet, 
met, peat, pit, leap, lip. I think the oo, Luke, tool, cool. I think that sound you can work on a little bit more. Match, mosh, cheap, sheep, feature, fisher, chaff, saft, chi, sorry, chi, chi, sheer. The last one, cheer, sheer, match, mash, cheap, sheep, feature, fisher. That's lesson number 13. Off, 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 hip, fine, wine. No, it's off, of. Fine, fine. Fine, Vine, you're not pronouncing the V with enough vibration. Wafer, wayward. So, wafer, waver. How happened? Who rehash? Behavior, hate. Batman, bitten. Important, brightening. Hat track. Okay, what you want to focus on in lesson 15, you want to focus on the glottal stop. So let me pronounce these for you. Batman. Bitten. Important. Brightening. Hat rack. Threatened. Major. Measure. Fraggle. Frazier. Legend. Listen, engine, allure, large, easier. Okay, this one. Let me listen to that one more time, just double check. Brightening, hat track, threaten. Major, measure, fraggle, frazier. No, major, measure. Fragile, Frazier. Legend, lesion. Legend, lesion. Lesion. Engine, allure, law. Azure, Azure. Engine, Azure. Much easier. Asia. So every single time in this one, you were not able to pronounce that second consonant sound correctly. So that's something you definitely want to work on. Remember, too, I have voice recording exercises at the end of each of these lessons. So once you go through the lesson, uh, Priya, you can also send me a voice recording the next day, and I'll listen to it. And I will tell you whether or not you've mastered, I think, the sounds that I'm trying to teach in that particular lesson. Kick, hick, sink, sack, game, game, gap. Gap, leg, leg. The one thing you want to remember here, when the G's at the end of the word, because the G is a voice consonant, the vowel sound should is longer. And when the K's at the end of the word, the vowel sounds shorter because the K is a voiceless consonant. This is a phonological rule that you can apply in many instances. So if I look at these words, I'll say cake, keg, sink, sag. Lake lag. Okay, let's keep going. Lean, rear, better, luggage. Roached, under, right, light, committed. Pace, base, flap, flap. Cap, cap, lap, lap, pay. Definitely with the P sound, when you put the P at the beginning of the word, you need to pronounce it with more air. It's not bass, but it's pace. It's not pay, but pay. Pay. So that one also 
I think you need to focus on. That's lesson number 19. Nice, nice. Zip, zip. Su, zu. Mas, mas. It's mace, maze. Su, zu. Lisa, Lisa. So I think the Z sound you also need to work on a little bit more. You're not clearly pronouncing that sound. Multiple robot. Example, pressure. Principal, number. People, philosopher. Now, philosopher, er, number, pressure, er, Robert, er, Robert. The er, the r at the end there, you want to pronounce the r a little more clearly. Vulcanism, written. Maximum, question. Summer, reason. Chasm, often. Good. Dip, dip. Cord, cord. Tight, tight. Notice you said tight, tight, tight. It's tight. Tight, not tight, but tight. Tight, tight. That's a pattern, Priya. Any any consonant sounds that involve a lot of air through the mouth, I'm guessing that in your first language you're not used to that, so you're pronouncing these sounds like you would do in your first language, and that's causing some intelligibility issues. Brain, brain. Fat, fat. Team, brain. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the R. Where, which lesson was that? I didn't notice that before, but I think you need to practice the R. You tend to make it dream, right. You, you make the R a little bit harder than what we do in English. Uh, if you're speaking a Scottish version of English, I would say you're fine. But usually most forms of standard English, we don't really pronounce the R like you're doing. Uh, I'm going to say, again, take a look at lesson number 18, especially with the R sound. Focus on improving your pronunciation of the R in the beginning and the medial positions of words and even the final position. You remember er, er, that one? Okay, let's keep going. We're almost done here. Tai, tai. Breet, breet. Teet, teet. Now, you pretty much mispronounced every sound there in all those words. So, thigh, thy, breath, breathe, teeth, teeth, through, no, yeah, through, though, worth, worthy. So, that, 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 that's the interdental consonant. That's something else that you want to work on, definitely. So, what do we know right now, Priya? Wow. Uh, you need more practice with speaking and pronunciation. Of course you do. You wouldn't have joined my course if you didn't, right? So you might want to write these down. Here are the lessons that you need to focus on the most. Lesson number 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, and also lesson number 24. So those are specific lessons uh, I think that you can focus on in order to improve your intelligibility. All right, now let's go to your educational background. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and listen to, to how you responded to some of these questions here. Okay, here we go. I would say I finished my course, not I have finished. So the simple past, we used to talk about events which have beginnings and ends in the past. I have worked as a mainframe developer in IBM. Approximately, I had two years of working experience. So I have ended my 
job on 2013 and I came to U.S. Can you say the word 2013? Uh, remember, with teen, put stress on the second syllable. 2013, 1330, 1440, 1550, and so on. Okay, let's go ahead and download your next one. So that was question number one. Let's listen to question number two. Okay, here we go. I have two reasons for improving my communication of English. First Notice how the word two, I have two reasons why. No, no, no. I have two. I have two reasons why. You need to pronounce that T with more air. First of all, I believe that if I do more practices on my pronunciation and speaking, speaking means it will help me to get higher score in my TOEFL speaking section? Of course it will. How about getting 26 or higher? That's my goal, is to help you get higher than that. The second reason is this ability uh, might help me to take seminar or make a discussion with my professors when I go to college. That's the most important. A lot of people really miss the importance of improving speaking. They all tell me they want a high speaking score, but that really is not the point. The point is you want to be able to communicate in English with native speakers, maybe in personal, professional, or academic situations. That's typically why we want to speak English, and, and you're expressing that desire here, which is good, because why you need to improve is motivational. And so you have to be motivated in, or you're, you're not going to work hard to do what you need to do to get better. These are the two important reasons. These are the two. Ooh. These are the two important reasons. For me to improve my English. Okay. Got it. Okay, now let's download the last one. You have one more question that you're answering here, and this also helps me understand more about your speaking proficiency, so thank you for answering these questions. I strongly believe that I can boost up my overall TOEFL score from 66 to 100 by using this course because I can improve my speaking and writing skill yes you can let me exercise. go back to what you just said here hold on boost up my overall TOEFL score from 66 to 100 by using this course from 66 to 100 correct my overall TOEFL score from 66 to 100 by using this course okay because I can improve my speaking and writing skill by doing the exercise and correcting my errors with, by, with the feedback of my teacher. Yes, with my feedback. I also think that it's possible I can get higher score on my reading and listening okay. if I do all the practices on this test. Yes. So I hope I can get more than 100 in my TOEFL. It's uh, all right. Use this course properly. Okay. And I think that you can now to go from sixty six to one hundred. You really need to do a lot of work. I probably already told you this, but you're looking at several months, maybe even as many as six months of practice. So it's something that you really got to focus on for the long term. Rule number one. Speak English as much as you can every day, all day, all week, all month. Very, very important. Continue to get exposure through reading and listening to uh, different types of uh, materials. You can watch TV, for example, with a focus on news, documentary history, and even science programs. That's going to be good. So really work on that exposure. The more listening you get gradually and the more you speak English, you will begin to change your accent. And let me turn the heater off here a minute. Give me a second.
So all these things become important for you. Uh, you got to stay motivated. So you seem to have reasons and you know why you want to improve. So what you need to do is about every uh, three to four hours a day, you want to be using my online course and get exposure to English any way you can, at least three or four hours every day. If possible, when you're driving around, listen to English or study vocabulary. When you're driving around, you can talk to yourself. You can take different topics from my website and practice answering them as you drive. You got to use English. You got to think outside the box. You got to do this all the time. It's going to be very, very important for you to reach your goal. And you can never, and I mean never, never give up. You got to stay focused 100% all day, every day. Don't let a day go by that you're not doing something to improve your English. All right, now, the next thing, Priya, is I need to figure out your intelligibility. That's my next goal here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this link. Give me a quick second. Your intelligibility is not very high. So my speaking and pronunciation continuum, I'm going to put you low intermediate at 2.9 out of 7. So you got a ways to go and you can look at my scale that I used. But basically, I can understand some of what you're saying, but you have a lot of pronunciation uh, problems. You have very limited vocabulary and you have problems with your verb tenses. You remember a present perfect versus past and so on. So you have a ways to go to improve your speaking. Your goal when you get to the end of the pronunciation section of my course, Priya, you want to try to get higher than 5.0. And then that's telling you that you're ready to take the speaking or you're ready to take the TOEFL IBT exam. Alrighty, and uh, thank you for doing that. I have one more pronunciation pretest to listen to today, and again, this one's focusing on vowel and consonant sounds of American English. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to listen to the student's pretest, and uh, I'm going to give her specific comments about which lesson she should focus on to get better. Now I'm going to start my recording. I'm going to talk to her directly. Hi there, these comments are for SK, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT, and I'm going to listen to your pronunciation pretest on vowel and consonant sounds. Here we go. Hi, Michael. This is Shruti. Hello. This is P. Theory lesson number one. All right. Pretest for okay. vowel and Consonant sounds. We got it. Lesson seven. When you, say, when you say that word vowel, you need to pronounce that vowel, vowel and consonant sounds. Hot, hot, wrong, grow, honor, over, father, toe, eight, pat, pot, map, mop, tack, talk. Oak and on Mac Mock Mac Mock Mock. You're almost there, but I want you to take a look at lesson number eight, particularly the second sound pot, mop, talk, on, mock. That sound, lesson number eight. Lesson nine, pride, brown. Royal lie, loud loyal, pie pound. Okay. Lesson ten. Kate get, blade let, made met, blade bled, ten ten. Lesson eleven. This is tough. I think you're pretty close with the A. Gate late. Mate, blade, Dane, den, blade, bled, mate, met. 
But my recommendation is with lesson 10, the longer sound, just make it a tad longer than what you're doing. That's going to be important for your intelligibility. Meet, meet, peat, peat, leap, leap, seat, seat, heat, heat, lesson 12. Heat, hit, meet, mit. You're having a little bit of trouble with the second sound, so meet, mit, mit, pit, lip, sit, hit. Those two sounds sound almost similar to me, so I think lesson number 12, you can go through that lesson or lesson number 11 and focus on the second vowel there. I think it's the, it's more of a lax vowel. Look, look, look. Luck, luck, took. Good. Tooth, tough. Good, cool. All right. Lesson thirteen. Lesson thirteen. The th. When you say the word thirteen, you got to get your tongue between your teeth. Thirteen. Match, match. Cheap, sheep. Feature, fisher. Shaved, shaft, cheer, shear. Okay. Fourteen. Off, off, half, half, fine, fine. Now you got to get that V. You need to pronounce that with more vibration. Van, van, wafer, waver. Wafer, waver. So you have half, have, fine. Vine, fan, van. Fifteen. How habit, who rehash, behavior, hate, Batman, bitten, important, brightening, hydrate, threatened. In this one, uh, I want you to work on lesson fifteen, the glottal stop. I think, for example. In, in American English, the glottal stop, the T, we don't really pronounce it in the middle of the word. We'll say like, Batman, bitten, important, brightening, hat rack, threatened. So that particular sound you can work on. 16. Major, measure, fragile, frazier, legend, lesion, engine, azure. Asia. Not bad. This is a hard sound for many students. So measure, Frazier, lesion, azure, Asia. For the most part, I think you understand the difference between these two okay. sounds. Cake, cake, sink, sag, game, game, cap, gap, leg, lag. Okay. Lesson 18. Lean, rare, better. Luggage, rugged, adder. Right, light, committed. Okay. 19. Base, base. Flap, flap. Cap, cap. Lap, lap. Pay, bay. Yeah, this one you need to work on. This is lesson 19, right? So first of all, the P, you need to pronounce it with more air. So you have pace, base, flap, flab, cap, cab, lap, lab, pay, bay. So I think two things here you want to be careful of. Uh, first of all, when the P is in the beginning of the word, pronounce it with more air than what you're doing. Second of all, when the P's at the end of the word, the vowel sound is shorter, which precedes it. Now, when the B's at the end of the word, the vowel will be longer, and it goes back to this phonological rule that basically says, when voice consonants are at the end of a word, the vowel which precedes those consonants is longer. So that's why I differentiate it in terms of the duration when I looked at these words. For example, I said the word, I said flap, Flab, cap, cab. Notice how the, the words that end in B, 
the vowel was longer in each of those cases. Lap, lab. All right, so what's the 19? Definitely you can take a look at that one. Lesson 20. Lies, lies. Lies, lies. Sip, zip. Sip, zip. So, so, maze, maze, Elisa. Mace, maze, Elisa. So I think you can, you in lesson 20, focus on the Z consonant more. That's when you want to work on pronouncing a little more clearly. 21. Multiple, Robert, example, pressure, principle, number, people, Philosopher. Lesson 22. Volcanism. Lesson 22. Ooh. I'm going to write that one down. That longer U sound, even though in the lesson 12 when you're reading it, you didn't have too much trouble, but I think you want to visit that lesson. So lesson number 12. Okay, let's keep and going. Maximum question. Summer reason. Charles often. Lesson 23, tip, tip, card, card, tide, tide, train, drain, fad, fad, team, dream. Pretty good. Lesson 24, tie, tie. No, 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 no. Big trouble here. No, thigh, thy. Breath. Breathe. Breath. Breathe. Teeth. Teeth. Through. Door. Word. Worthy. No, this is a trouble one. Now, lesson 24 is hard for you. Okay. What do we know so far? Okay, first of all, here are the lessons I want you to focus on the most and the vowel and consonant part of my online course. Focus on lesson 8, uh, lesson number 10, number 11, number 12, number 14, 15, 19, 20, and also lesson number 24. Those are the lessons that you're having more trouble with. Each of those lessons are approximately 10 to 20 minutes long, so I'd recommend that you work hard by going through all those lessons, reading out loud as you go through the the videos and even go through all pronunciation lessons but focus more on the ones I just outlined here. Started. Okay, let's see how you answered these three questions. Part B. First question, what is your educational background and your work history? Notice you said part B, but it's part part B. Part B. You need to pronounce the P with more air. I completed my Bachelor of Physical Therapy in India. Okay. Coming to my work history, I worked in United States for four months as a physical therapist. All right. Second question. Why is it important for you to improve your speaking and pronunciation abilities of American English? It is very important for me to improve my speaking and pr pronunciation abilities. Okay. In order to. No, she didn't say the word abilities. You're more abilities, but it's abilities uh, to, to improve my speaking and pronunciation abilities in English. Complete uh, doctorate of physical therapy program. Okay. Question three. What do you hope to achieve in this course? I hope to achieve a speaking score of 26 and okay. writing 24. Alright. Which overall improves my speaking and pronunciation abilities of American English. Okay, so one suggestion. So, as you're doing the speaking and pronunciation practice, that's all part of your cost your monthly cost of $45, right? However, 
For the writing, I'm not sure what your writing subtotal score is, but if you need a little bit more help on writing, I do have an error correction service. It's expensive, it's not cheap, but if you want me to error correct one of your essays, it usually takes me about an hour to do this. So you can send me the essay. I will error correct the independent or integrated writing practice test. I will tell you everything that's wrong. I will show you exactly what you have to do to get a perfect score on this writing task. And I will send you back the comments by video, video comments. Now that service, that additional service, it's $50 for one, one essay. I'm not kidding, just for one. But uh, it is very helpful for some students, and it does help them especially if they want to get the score 24. Now, you don't have to use a service if you don't want. If you send me writing practice, uh, I will give you a score, but I won't give you very specific feedback, at least not for that price of $45 a month. So I hope you don't get too angry with me, but I'm being honest with you, I, I have very limited time. And to correct the errors in an essay is very time consuming. It's much easier to comment on your speaking, in my opinion, because um, I've been doing it for so long and I can speak to you that way. I don't have to type or correct anything that way. I can just do it verbally. So every time you do speaking practice, I can give you four to six minutes of comments after that to help you. But there's no way I can get four to six minutes of comments for writing. It takes a lot longer than that. Um, all right? Anyway, uh, the, the next thing I want to do now is I'm going to give you what's called an intelligibility score. So you can kind of understand where you are right now. So on a scale of one to seven, seven being a native speaker, one being a high beginner, uh, I'm going to put you at about 4.3, your high intermediate level. You do have an accent, it's a little bit distracting, but generally you have pretty good fluency with your speaking and pronunciation of American English. Your goal is to try to move up to advanced 5.1 or higher. At that point, you're probably ready to take the TOEFL exam. Now here's, here's another suggestion. Uh, you'll notice uh, in my online course, if you go to the 8 section, you can see some information about, it's called Score Nexus. And if you want to take a section-specific speaking or writing practice test as you get near your end of your studies with me, I would suggest that so you can get a second opinion from another independent website who will also uh, listen to and score and read your speaking and writing practice. So if you want to do that, here's my recommendation. Once you're getting around 26 points on the speaking pretty much every time you submit a practice test, and then when your scores in writing are consistently around 24 points or higher, then go to Score Nexus and then take a speaking practice test with them, take a writing practice test over there, and then get your results back. If they confirm what I'm already saying, then that looks like you are ready to take the TOEFL exam. So now you have two different opinions telling you that you are ready to take the TOEFL exam and you're ready to get the scores of 26 and 24. So that's why I do have this other website. I like to partner and work with some other people also to help my students so they get the most accurate feedback possible and they can know what their level is. And then they make a decision about whether or not they are ready to take the TOEFL exam. Okay? And uh, thank you for completing this pronunciation pretest.